I am uh, Jonathan Davis, Superintendent of Circleville City Schools. Um, and tonight's session is on our Tiger Remote Learning option. Before we get started, before anything else, I do want to take a moment uh, with a captive audience and say how much I appreciate families, parents, guardians, community members, our staff for uh, what, you've, what you've done over the last few months, your patience, your grace, uh, your kindness for um, waiting, up, waiting through this with us. Uh, I know there have been a lot of changes on our end, on the state's end, on the local end, um, and I, I recognize the frustration there. So I'm hopeful that tonight provides some answers for you uh, that can help you in decision-making for your student for the 2020-2021 school year. As we get started, I wanna clarify, this meeting is for folks who are interested in learning about the Tiger Remote Learning Option, which is the option to keep your student home for the 2020-2021 school year, at least through the first semester. And we're gonna talk about that here in a moment. Um, so if you have wandered into this space and, and you uh, thought we might be talking about uh, specific calendars or Schedule B or Group A or Group B or alternate transportation, that's not necessarily this meeting. Um, we'll be sharing that information in a different space. So we are going to talk strictly about the Tiger Remote Learning Option. As we go through this presentation, I know you have many questions and, and hopefully we'll be able to address those uh, throughout. But you're going to have questions. Please go ahead and start adding those to the chat feature of this meeting. Mr. DeBow and Mr. Urig are here to uh, grab those questions. They are going to filter those back to me so that we can make sure and answer the questions that you have that maybe we don't uh, hit on in regards to uh, the slides we have currently. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and get started, I think. There we go. So again, the objective of uh, this particular session is to talk strictly about the Tiger Remote Learning Option. Uh, we're gonna run through the logistics of the programs that we are offering for those students and families who are interested in keeping their students home. And then again, uh, we wanna keep a, a bevy of time at the end to answer any questions we maybe didn't address throughout here. So that's our goal tonight. We hope to uh, address as many of, of your questions about this uh, as possible. So first things first, it's, it's probably impossible to talk about this option without talking about what we've been charged with as a district from March until now. So not to go through a revisionist history, you've lived this with us, but up uh, through the summer, the governor's office required school districts or urged school districts to come up with a number of options for schools so uh, our goal and our goal always is to make sure that that students can get back here, but obviously uh, is getting back here safely and under the direction of our local health officials. So schedule A was all students returning um, in a similar format to what you know school to be traditionally. Schedule B is the schedule we will be returning to on August 25th at this time. It is a split cohort of students. Schedule C is the all remote model that you would remember from the spring. Um, and then what we did, because parents told us two things. They told us, I want my student back in school, or they told us, I want my student to be able to remain home and work from home for the 2020, 2021 school year. It's kind of the environment we're in. 50% of people want one thing, 50% of people want the other. So we wanted to make sure we could accommodate families and students to the best of our ability. So we created the Tiger Remote Learning Option. So to clarify again, students returning to campus will be coming back on Schedule B, uh, the split cohort of Group A and Group B, and uh, the folks on this session obviously are here to, to learn about the all online option, the Tiger Remote Learning Option. So what does this entail? Obviously, uh, it is imperative that we are extremely transparent in what this is going to look like for you as family members, for students and for us as a district moving forward. This is a whole new model of instruction. Um, and it's, it, again, it's imperative that, that we're honest and, and helping you to understand, obviously the student is our number one focus. Your student, their safety, their learning is our number one focus. But in learning from home, there are different challenges and different partnerships that have to take place for that to be successful. So in framing what the Tiger Remote Learning Option looks like, it's a partnership between us as the school district you as a parent or guardian, the student and the teacher we will align you with. So our success will be dictated by how well we communicate and work together as family and school unit to incentivize, engage, educate the student, 
with some of the new online platforms and curriculum I'm going to talk to you about here in a moment. So um, we want to make sure that that folks recognize that this will not be a platform where we are zooming into your house every single day to provide what looks like a, a school setting um, for your student. It's going to be a require a partnership. Now we're going to provide resources and all those things we're going to talk about in a moment. But the success of the student will largely be dependent upon how we as adults work to make sure that we engage and work together. So um, diving into what I've gotten the most questions about is what's the curriculum going to look like? Parents told us in the spring that they absolutely appreciated and loved how much our staff went out of their way to communicate with families about, you know, student safety, their well-being, um, and their learning. But we all recognized that we were thrust into that without really any planning. So we needed to take what we learned there and enhance that. So I'm going to talk about high school first, and then I'll go back to K-8. So in the high school setting, in grades 9 through 12, we're going to utilize uh, two platforms for students. These will not be new to a high school student. Um, they are Google Classroom for the majority of core instruction where a teacher in the classroom setting will provide them resources, videos, they will provide direct instruction as well as uh, enhanced engagement activities, those kinds of things for your high school student via Google Classroom. If you recall, all of our high school students have a Google Chromebook, they have Google accounts. This is what we did in the spring, but we obviously are going to enhance it uh, with a number of new features that way. So if your student is in the high school setting, they will learn from the teacher that they would technically learn from when they are physically on this campus or if they were physically on this campus. In a handful of scenarios, mostly in elective situations, students will be uh, placed on a, another platform called Plato. Most high school students are familiar with this. Again, this will be in, in an elective situation. Uh, this is a platform we've utilized for years in regards to credit recovery in, in certain instances, as well as to offer some new and unique electives for students. So to kind of boil it down, if you have a ninth through 12th grader that you are interested in putting on this option, the course catalog that we offer at the high school level is going to be offered to them for the most part in the online platform. They will also be offered instruction and support by most likely, in almost all instances, the same person who would provide that support if they were physically here on campus. They're licensed in this. This is what they do on a daily basis. So that's in grades 9 through 12. In K through 8, parents told us that one of the biggest things that parents told us was there was just a discrepancy about uh, the platforms that were used. Some used Google Classroom. Other teachers did other things. And in defense of, of my awesome staff, again, we had never had to create that scenario before. So that was all us learning as we went. We decided as a district to, to go out and spend a, a decent amount of money to make sure that we were addressing that large concern from families. And we purchased a curriculum um, or purchased a platform, a learning management system called Florida Virtual. Now I wanna clear one thing up real quick. I've had a lot of questions, comments, emails. Um, I don't do Facebook for obvious reasons, but Facebook comments about why in the world would you buy something from Florida? This is a group out of Florida that are a group of teachers who are licensed. They use the Ohio learning standards. This isn't us that bought the Florida standards. This is a platform that uses the Ohio learning standards. It's linked to everything we do in the classroom as well. So I want to clear that up. The moment we said Florida virtual, people think we went out and, and bought something that is only aligned to Florida. So um, what is this going to do for families? Students in grades K-8, your platform is going to look identical. So if mom and dad, if you've got a first grader and you've got a fourth grader, when they log in, it's going to look the same. The features are going to look the same. The communication will look the same. Um, the grading platform, the communication, the feedback system, the work, the videos, those will all look very uniform for you. And, and that's one of the things parents told us was there are too many logins. There are too many things my kid has to go out and do here, go and do here. Um, it gets confusing and we're trying to simplify that. The other thing that this does is it gives my teachers one platform that they can really dive deep into and make sure that they're, they're specialists at it so that when they're instructing your students in, in a remote learning platform like this, 
that we're utilizing your student, your time for the most effective instruction we possibly can. So um, our teachers in grades K through eight, all of our teachers in grades K through eight will go through a pretty rigorous training uh, program. They've already started that um, and all of them will have this. So that will provide some consistency for moms and dads and kids in grades K through eight. So those are the learning platforms we are going to use for your students in grades K through 12 if you decide uh, to move through in the Tiger Remote Learning. So a few more things I wanna make sure that, that we highlight, and we've put this out in communication, but we think it's important to, to continue to let families know. Uh, because of the ever-changing nature of what's going on, be, because of the cost we've incurred to make sure we have enough seats for students, scheduling, all of those kinds of things, it, it really is important for us that if you make this application to the Tiger Remote Learning option that you recognize you're making at least a one semester commitment to it. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions from families that say, wait a second, can I stay on it all year? Absolutely you can. We're not planning on, you know, pulling the plug on it for at the end of the first semester. Um, you know, we are obviously committed to it through the year, but from a family's perspective, please recognize if you're making that decision, that you're signing that student up for at least a semester. I also wanna clarify another thing that maybe, maybe has come through in a chat question. Can I go to school for a week and then do the online option? And the answer to that is that's not as easy as it seems and, and we absolutely do not think that's gonna be something we can do. So um, if you're thinking about, I'm just thinking about trying school for a week or two um, and then I'll elect if I want to do the online option later. That's not something that's going to be, uh, we're going to be able to offer at this time. So I recognize it's a big decision, but from a district perspective also, we need to make sure uh, that we know our cohorts online as well as our cohorts in our building, especially from a state safety perspective. So our goal is if your student is remote learning from their house, so you've, let's say you've got a fourth grade student learning from home, our goal is that they're learning in a fashion that is similar in pace to their fourth grade peers that are here on campus. So we're kind of trying to keep students together in their learning pace. Now, obviously, if students you know, pick things up well um, and we need to offer them some, some added instruction and those kinds of things, we can absolutely do that. But we wanna to try to keep our students, our remote learning students are tigers, our kids here on campus are tigers, we wanna keep them all together. But we are not going to create a scenario where your student is logging in at the same time that students are physically in the classroom. And, and you've probably heard this synchronous versus asynchronous. Synchronous instruction would be your student is logging into their Chromebook at the exact same time that teacher's teaching in the classroom and basically zooming into that classroom. We are not creating that scenario. We did not get First of all, from a technological standpoint, it's, it's very, very difficult to do and we don't have the means to do that at this time. Plus, families told us, my student learns on a different schedule than, than what you're gonna be on this year. So I'd like some flexibility in how my student consumes this information. So we are going to be on an asynchronous. They could have separated those words to make it a little easier, but it, we will be on an asynchronous situation, meaning your student's gonna be provided instruction, they'll be provided videos, they'll be in contact with their teachers, but you as a family member, you as mom and dad are going to be able to dictate how your student works on an individual daily basis. Are they an early riser like my son is? You can get him up and get him going a little earlier, or if you're like my daughter, then let's wait till after lunch and let's do it that way because that's just a fight you don't want. So um, that's the flexibility parents have, have talked to us about, and that's what we've created uh, in this scenario. Mr. Davis, what about attendance? Is that still a thing? That's still a thing. House Bill 410 still exists. It is the attendance law in the state of Ohio. There's lots of speculation that that's going to change, but it hasn't changed yet. So if you are making the decision to keep your student home in the Tiger Remote Learning option, you need to know that two things need to occur for your student to be counted as in attendance for that week. They need to be engaged and they need to complete assignments. What's engagement look like? Are you communicating with the teacher? Are you um, hopping on meetings if you can throughout the week? If there's direct instruction opportunities, are you jumping in, interactive, all that kind of stuff. You're engaged when you're given the opportunity to be engaged. 
as well as by the end of the week, you are completing assignments for that particular week. Um, so with that being said, I've, I've had families ask me, well, my student doesn't necessarily need to talk to their teacher every day, but they're going to complete all the assignments. Is my kid here for that week? Absolutely. Your kid's here for that week. Um, if your student is engaged, but they're struggling, they can't get those assignments completed. Is my student there for the week? Yes, but that means we as a district, mom and dad, and the student need to make sure uh, that we provide some additional support to that student if they may need it. So what we're, what we're encouraging folks to understand is, are we gonna go in every Monday at 11 a.m. and make sure you know, Johnny's logged in? No. By the end of that week, have they been engaged with their teacher and have they completed the assignments that we've uh, laid out there for them? So uh, to complete this from, from that perspective, we as a district are providing Chromebooks one-to-one -one, uh, for all students in the Tiger Remote Learning Option. That's grades K through 12. We have been a six through 12 Chromebook district for the better part of the last three or four years. And uh, we are gonna provide the technology to, to all students in the Tiger Remote Learning Option. I'm gonna to talk to you here in a moment about how we're gonna do that. But a big question I'm getting is, if my student still has their Chromebook from last year, can they use that one? Absolutely. You don't need to come get another one. The only way you would need to come in and, and uh, get another one is if you need some assistance with that, if it's broken, uh, if you happen to need a charger, those kinds of things. If you just need technology assistance, login information, those kinds of things, you can email technology at cvcsd.com and Mr. Garman and his group uh, can take care of you from that perspective. Okay. So, and again, I'll, I'll get into how we will uh, get those Chromebooks to you here momentarily. If my student is a Tiger Remote Learning Option student, meaning they're learning from home all the time, can they still partake in extracurriculars? And the answer to that is yes. If we're able to, to continue to offer extracurriculars per the guidelines, your student is a, they're a Tiger. They're a student here. They have the same options and access that, that other students do as well. Will, let me see here, make sure I got that, okay. Grading scale, how will we grade students? So we are gonna follow the grading scale of each particular building. On the website of every building is their handbook along with their grading practices. Now the teachers will communicate this to you and your student as you begin down this path but we will be grading students this year. If you remember in the spring, we did not do that in grades six through 12. We provided pass fails. That will not be the scenario this year. We're gonna follow our, our grading scales. For more information, you can hop on um, and grab the handbooks for that particular building. Or like I said, um, our teachers will communicate that to you. Um, one of the, the larger questions we've been getting is how much time do you expect my student to be online? How much time is it going to take my student to learn throughout the week in the online learning option? So I want to create a huge caveat to this, that these are generalities based on what we've learned from our online platforms. Some students may move a little quicker. Other students may move a little slower. Nothing wrong with any of those. But from mom and dad's perspective, you want to get a grasp of, you know, what should I carve out in the day as far as support and maybe a schedule for your particular students. So in grades K through five, uh, you should expect that your students ha have about two hours of work a day. Again, give or take, depending on uh, the week, the month, the assignments, the units, how quickly your students may move through there. And in grades six through 12, it will very much depend upon the course schedule that your student is taking. We are offering honors classes in grades nine through 12 like we normally would your student may be required to take, you know, it may take a little bit more work than, than a student who is taking a different course schedule. So 20 to 25 hours per week for students in grades six through 12. All right, I've, I've got my first fill in question here real quick from, from our folks. Um, if you received a schedule A or B in the mail, that really does not apply to you if you have chosen the learning option. So I'm gonna touch base. That's if you got your A, B schedule in the mail already and you've made the remote learning declaration, you can hang on to it if you want. Um, you can throw it in the trash if you'd like or recycle preferably. Um, but I want, that's one that, that our guys are getting a lot of questions on. So I just wanted to throw that in there. 
All right, who are my teachers? I've made this, this decision for my student to stay home. Who are my, my children's teachers? So in the last two days, I have over 100 applications to this online learning platform. I'm over 400 students. Most of those have come in the last seven days. So at the elementary school, I'm not prepared to tell you 1000% exactly who your teachers are gonna be because you recognize that I have to allocate resources and staff and those kinds of things based on numbers. So you will, I can definitively tell you, you will have a licensed teacher that works in this district that is highly qualified um, and they are going to do a fantastic job, specifically grades K through five. We're still kind of working on that um, and we will absolutely get that to you, but I'm not prepared to give you specific names. And if I did right now, they may be watching this and they may be shocked and that's, that's not good either. Um, grades six through 12, it's dependent upon your student's schedule. But again, like I said previously, if your student is, is scheduled for sixth grade math at Circleville Middle School and they're Tiger Remote Learning, they'll learn from the sixth grade math teacher who's at Circleville Middle School and is highly qualified uh, to teach that content. So uh, I, this is also a good time to inform you that at the high school specifically, your course schedule is, is extremely important. And I'm gonna talk to you here in a moment about uh, how we, we communicate that to you and what you need to do from a building level. But your teachers will be Circleville City Schools teachers, um, regular classroom teachers who are highly qualified. Each building will be putting out in the next few days a building level communication uh, about the Tiger Remote Learning Option students, how they will communicate with you in regards to who those teachers are, um, and kind of next steps for that. So again, touching base on the high school, getting a student schedule so the student knows exactly who their teachers are. Because the intent for us is the week of August 24th will be the first week of school for your Tiger Remote Learning Option students as well. That will be a week that's filled with your teachers getting in touch with you, making sure that they, they have the best way to communicate with you. They can answer any questions you have. They can talk to your students about grading, activities, uploading assignments, and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and they'll provide a few assignments. So the buildings will be communicating with you. Some of them may give you a call individually. So recognize that you may get individual calls from a uh, building level, an administrator, the guidance counselor, or the teacher that will be teaching. But the goal is that the week of August 24th, your student will know the, the name, you'll have the technology, which I'll touch on here in a minute, and you can get going in the Tiger Remote Learning Option. So how do we get technology? First of all, I wanna reiterate, if you have a Chromebook, you have it already, you do not need to come back in and pick up another Chromebook. Only thing you need to do is if there is a, if it's broken, if you need a charger, something like that, you can email technology at cbcsd.com, we'll take care of you. They may ask you to come in. For those of you, especially the K through five students who need to come in, students new to the district, those kinds of things, um, that need to come in and pick up a Chromebook, you will have two options to do that. This will be held at Circleville Elementary School for all students. So just because it says at CES doesn't mean that if you're a high school student, you can't, can't come there. It will be Monday, August 17th from 1 to 3 p.m. and Tuesday, August 18th from 1 to 3 p.m. Again, if you, are, uh, if you already have one, you do not need to come in during those times. All right, so I'm gonna to touch base on a few more things and then I'll um, open up to these guys, which if you have not, if you have a question, please submit it in the chat box. We've got a handful of those already, so we will make sure that we address those. Reiterating, commitment. Please recognize that we're asking for a one semester commitment. If you get through this and decide at the end of the semester, you're not interested in your student continuing and you want your student to return for the second semester, we're gonna give you an option to notify us prior to December 1st so that we can make plans for your student to return in the second semester. Mr. Davis, will my student be tested if they're a Tiger Remote Learning student? The answer to that is yes, if there is state testing. They are still our student. We will need to do everything within our powers to uh, follow the state guidelines when that uh, hits. Right now, there's a lot of conversation about the adjustment to state testing allowing it to be done in a remote fashion. So if they allow that, obviously we will uh, make accommodations to do it that way. 
Worst case scenario, we will uh, create a situation where we could bring your student in to maybe test in a small environment, maybe a one-on-one -on -one environment, those kinds of things. But right now, testing is something we're still waiting on state guidance from. So, Are the lessons interactive? Again, to reiterate, this is an asynchronous situation. Will there be group works and those kinds of things? As the students get a little bit uh, in the middle school and high school, you're gonna see teachers working collaboratively with students, but recognize your student will spend a decent amount of time doing work in their own individual ske schedule and fashion. So we're gonna make it as engaging as humanly possible. I have uh, the utmost faith in our staff, um, but recognize that you know electing this option may remove a little bit of that connection that we, we naturally get here. I've already touched on this once, but I'll hit it again. Will we be offering advanced or honors courses? Yes, we will. We'll be offering our course catalog from the middle school to high school. Uh, we will be offering honors courses and general education courses. If you have a student that would, is identified as gifted, especially in the elementary, we are gonna be working on trying to add additional supports and an, an enhancement of their learning through the platform, but it isn't like we will be pushing them forward like, like we would naturally be doing here on the physical campus. If you know our gifted platform, lots of times we accelerate students. We could create that scenario, but it will be on a base or you know, a case-by-case -case basis. Again, we will be providing device access. I've already given you kind of the dates on that. One question we are getting is, is Mr. Davis, are you providing internet? for us? And unfortunately, the answer is no. We don't have uh, the means to do that. I can tell you that we've joined a group of, of public educators that are, are lobbying the state to increase internet access across our county and across uh, Southern Ohio. Um, we're hopeful that that's something that gets addressed in the next legislative session. We are working on creating Wi-Fi hotspots that you could pull up to uh, or in your community. We will advertise those as we find the space. Please remember, we do have the parking lot here at the high school that we've created a Wi-Fi hotspot. Anybody can pull up in the high school parking lot. The Wi-Fi access is open and uh, you can work from there. One of the large questions remaining from families in making this decision is, if you have a student who is identified in special education, will they be provided support and service? Absolutely, they will. Recognize that we'll need to make some adjustments uh, in certain scenarios, you'll work with your IEP team and Mr. Urig in regards to what that looks like, um, but we will provide those services. Virtual therapy, if your student has a related service, uh, we will be providing virtual therapy in, in certain instances. It will be a student by student basis, but if you are making this election for the, the benefit of your student and what you think, don't let the special education Thing be a barrier. We're going to do everything we can to provide the necessary services uh, per the IEP and we'll communicate with you on that. And before, the last one before I hop on and, and grab some of these questions you've submitted is a reminder that this Friday is our deadline. It is important for us to have a, a hard and fast deadline so we can make sure we have schedules for the rest of uh, the rest of the students who will be on campus and the numbers as they've come in. And like I said, we've gotten quite a few over the last few days, last week really, uh, they changed the numbers a little bit in rosters and other buildings. So I am going to uh, look up here and see what my, my first question is. Again, if you still have questions, please put those in the chat. Wonderful question. How do we know if our kids were picked for this program? So this evening we, we finished uh, the, the batch of letters, almost 400 letters. You'll be receiving those in the next 24 to 48 hours. 99.9% .9 of people are going to get an acceptance letter if you have applied for the Tiger Remote Learning option. Uh, there might be a couple folks we give a phone call to. We just want to make sure that everyone's on the same page, but you will be receiving a letter in the mail in the next probably 24 to 48 hours in regards to uh, your application. If you are on this call, and I want to be very clear, if you are on this call and haven't formally submitted an application, which you can find on our website. It's under the COVID-19 hub, which is on the parent resources. Please, 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 please do that. If you have not submitted that you and you don't get a letter, you're not in. And that we were gonna, your student will be locked into one of the groups and then we'll be expecting your students to show up. So um, 
everybody that's made that application will get a letter in the next probably 24, 48 hours. Will the Tiger Remote Learning option be for kindergarten too? Absolutely. It is grades K through 12. Uh, we already have a number of kindergarten students signed up and the teacher that will be instructing those folks is a uh, K licensed teacher, so absolutely. Will every student get a Chromebook or will they have to share by family? Really good question. Every student who is enrolled in this district who uh, applies to the Tiger Remote Learning option will get a Chromebook. So we're not just providing a Chromebook per family, we'll be providing it per student. How will I know if my child is struggling and on the same level as the children who are in-person learning? So let me, let me say one thing and then I'll kind of come back to that question. By five o'clock, one of the things parents told us was we, we really struggled knowing in the spring if our student was on track or successful within a given week. One of the things we are gonna do as a staff here is by Friday evening at five o'clock, everybody's progress book information will be up to date for that week. So if I'm mom and I log on at 501 on Friday evening, I should know where my student is for that particular week. Now, that's gonna be the first indication where we're gonna know if the student didn't complete work, they weren't engaged or they're really struggling. That should identify that we as a team, we talked about that partnership earlier, need to get together and talk about what's the best option moving forward into that next week. That again, that should be a conversation between the teacher and the parent and obviously include the student if and when necessary. But um, we're gonna know by updating progress book as well as obviously there should be communication back and forth. And, and that's why I say it's important in that partnership, you as mom and dad communicate your concerns readily uh, as we go throughout, because we're all kind of learning in this platform together. Will my child still be allowed in band or sports? I touched on that, absolutely. Your student's a tiger, they can be involved in all the extracurriculars, uh, all of the students who are physically coming on campus are. What supplies would we need for online learning? So the teachers will communicate that to you. As I said, that first week will be a lot of getting to know the platform, getting to know who the teacher is, They'll communicate that. I don't want you to run out and buy a bunch of stuff right now in that regard, because it could very much depend upon the lessons provided by the individual staff and those kinds of things. So we will communicate that with you um, from a teacher. So uh, a question was, will the students in the classroom be learning from a, the same platform and everything that students are online? And, and I may have glossed over this earlier. Absolutely. So students who are learning here in Circle Hill City Schools will be using the same resources, the same platform that your students will be using from home. And let me tell you why. If we're required to go into that remote learning plat situation again, Schedule C, we wanna make sure that we can keep consistency in instruction. So our teachers are gonna spend significant time, they already have, they've been doing it all summer, uh, making sure that they're prepared for all of those di different scenarios. So your student should be learning basically at the same pace and the same resources as the students who are here on campus. Okay, next one. How do we know classes a high school student is signed up for? Great, great, great question. So Mr. Thornsley and Mrs. Scott just this afternoon uh, sent out a message about schedule pickup. That schedule pickup is for all students on August 17th and the 18th. And if your student is a Tiger Remote Learning student in the high school, they will still have a schedule. So if you follow us on social media, we'll, Mr. Thornsley, I'll give a call out about those things as well. If your student is in grades nine through 12, they need to make sure they still come and pick up a schedule because that schedule in, will indicate who their teacher is, as well as we'll provide them login information and a number uh, of different things. Are we offering live lessons with Circleville teachers? So one of the things that, that teachers will be working on in their professional development is creating scenarios where they can connect individually with your students in meetings like this maybe, but also providing resources like videos and those kinds of things that you can go back and access to make sure that your student's getting the instruction they need. So that'll basically be dependent upon uh, the class, the individual teacher, the need of the student. So you'll have some opportunities there. 
we aren't setting up like four o'clock on Tuesday as everybody hop on and, and, and get support, that kind of thing, because it'll look a little bit different depending upon the grade level. Will a syllabus be provided to ensure we know the expectation for the semester and assignments? Absolutely. So that looks a little bit different in the elementary. That'll be a communication with parents, obviously. But in grades six through 12, they'll be very clear about the expectation, the course assignments, and all of those kinds of things. So they will uh, provide a syllabus. The high school has a syllabus. They provide to students already. They'll continue to do those kinds of things. In Schedule B, will they have live lessons on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, or will it just be like Schedule C? So, great question. Um, no. So, that kind of gets to the, the, the students in Schedule B. Uh, students in Schedule B that are here physically will get their live lessons on the days their group is here. And then, like I said, for remote learning students, the teacher will work with you on what makes the best, most sense to provide your student the right kind of instruction. What are the expectations for Pumpkin Show Week? That's a really good question. So Pumpkin Show Week, you're going to recognize in the calendar that we've distributed again, that's on the COVID-19 hub on parent resources on our website, you're going to see that that's a remote learning week for students. So what's the expectation? All of our students, including obviously the Tiger Remote Learning students, will be working remotely that week. Our teachers will be providing them lessons for that particular week. And we utilize those two extra days because of the way the calendar fell and the need to make up hours per the state's required hours minimum. Um, so students will have online assignments for that particular week. All right. Uh, could they complete the work in one day for the week and have the rest of the week off? That's where I really said that flexibility in your schedule as a family is one of the things we're, we're trying to take into consideration. We recognize the difficulty in making this decision from a daycare perspective, that kind of stuff. So if a student could complete the assignments effectively in a day, can they do that? They can do that. Um, if it takes them you know, four and a half days to do it, Fine, we are not gonna dictate the schedule per se of, of students. Really the only time we as a district will dictate it is if no work is being done, students aren't logging in, and we can't get communication back and forth between the parents and the teachers. So uh, it, to answer that question, that will be a family by family situation. But yes, if your student was gonna complete the assignments in one day and they can do that, they're allowed to do that. Will there be teaching resources provided for parents to aid in partnering as teachers? Absolutely. One of the things I really want to do is, is create scenarios throughout this nine weeks where you as families not only have those resources, you have an outlet where you can reach out to us and get the resources you need. So this is something we're going to be working on with our staff upon their return. We want to educate you in the tools and resources before the students start this. FLBS will will be very new and different, especially for families. So we're gonna provide tutorials. That first week, what, what I said was we're gonna communicate a lot. We're gonna provide you, here's how you log in, here's how you find out, um, you know, here's how you upload assignments, those kinds of things. So I recognize that one of the big questions is, my kids at home, you gotta provide me some resources. We will absolutely do that. Would it be possible to see a sample of the daily lessons on the Florida platform before we make a decision. Unfortunately, we cannot. Due to copyright laws, we do not have the ability to do that. I know that's been a very, very big question for folks. If you wanna reach out to my office individually and have a, a, a little longer conversation, we can do that. Um, or I've advised a number of people, if you get on YouTube and you put in uh, Florida Virtual or FLVS, there will be some, some videos that come up from there. This is a, a platform, a learning management system that a number of folks around the country utilize. In Pickaway County alone, a couple other districts are utilizing it, as well as uh, some districts in Franklin and Fairfield County. So if you Google search it, YouTube, you're gonna be able to find some resources that may answer your question. Is leveled reading material included with a Florida online learning program? If not, can my students borrow leveled reading materials from the district? So big focus. I got a K through five kiddo. I need to make sure that we're focusing on ELA. I promise you that's our focus too. 
So our teachers will work with you on the reading materials you may need. We're working on what library, procedure, library procedures will be. Um, and our teachers, again, especially in the K th through three band, the majority of them are reading endorsed. They have master's degrees. Your students' reading proficiency is of the utmost importance to us at the elementary. So absolutely, we'll work, you'll work with your teacher for that, but those res resources will be available. Um, we'll take a couple more here. Um, what about lunch? If online, will they still have a lunch option? So we are working on right now a grab and go option, pick up for students that when they're not here, not just on the Tiger remote, but students who are on those, on those alternating days. So we will have a, a form that families can fill out. Right now our plan is we'll have a form, pre-order form that families can fill out on a weekly basis. You fill that out, we'll prepare those meals. You come through kind of like you did in the spring, pick those up and go from there. So we are, we are not forgetting about meals either in the Tiger Remote Learning option or when students are not here on campus. I have not received an acceptance letter for the online learning. The ETA is if you have applied, you should have that by Friday. If you've already applied, you do not need to fill out another application. So again, if you've submitted, we got it. We will get that letter to you um, in the next 24, 48 hours. If you don't have it, um, please reach out to my office, email us. I can reach out to the building secretary if they have the list. And my guys say that you can reach out to the building secretaries also. They also have the list. So if I'd say by Friday, if you don't have that letter, just give us a call or shoot us an email. But again, you should have those uh, here in the next day or so. Will in-class students also do remote learning on the other three days if you were on Schedule B? That is absolutely right. So students that are here on Monday and Tuesday will do remote learning Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Yes. Can the high schooler schedules be emailed to them? We'd like to avoid large groups of people. My recommendation is you just give us a call. Um, obviously, we can make accommodations if that is necessary. Or you can email Mrs. Scott at vicky.scott at cvcsd.com. If she's watching, she's probably going to love that I just gave out um, her email, but you can find that on the website. Um, just reach out to us. We can obviously make that accommodation um, if you don't want to come in. Not a big deal. Will this meeting be available after tonight? This has been recorded and we are, uh, will be sharing this on our website and upload that as soon as we possibly can. My encouragement to you is if you have further questions from here, please email us, call us at the district office 474-4340. We'd be glad to answer those for you. Um, you can also reach out to us at information at cvcsd.com. Remember the deadline is this Friday please get those things in. Um, and we have also included on the COVID-19 hub of our website, a number of informational resources, including an FAQ. So I appreciate you all. If you have further questions from here, um, please reach out to us and let us know. And uh, I do look forward to working with you all this school year. Thanks so much.